Introductions. It's now time for our member's statements. The member from Lambton, Kent Middlesex. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, parents across Ontario are raising the alarm after finding their children have been exposed to extremely inappropriate material while at school. Recently, children at publicly funded schools in the Cambridge region, as early as grade two, have unintentionally accessed images and videos of graphic pornography, as well as obscene and racist jokes on school computers, on school Wi-Fi, and during school time. In this case, there is an administrative policy in place that says the board's first responsibility is to provide filtering protection for internet access, which will restrict material that is inappropriate and is racist, pornographic, dangerous, or obscene. Teachers reported that internet filtration has become lax over the last two years. One such petition has been started at www.waterlooregionsafeschools.com. These parents want board staff to take their concerns more seriously and do more to restrict access to this material. We can't expect children as young as seven and eight years old to moderate their own internet use responsibly. Parents expect that internet filters and supervision will be in place in our public schools to prevent their children from being exposed to this type of material. Mr. Speaker, I urge all school boards across Ontario to take action to ensure that strict internet safety filters and supervision are in place. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. Last Wednesday, people across Ontario and across Canada paid their respects to our veterans, the men and women who sacrificed their health and safety and sometimes lives to provide a peaceful and safe country for us to live and work in. Unfortunately, Speaker, I was unable to attend the remembrance ceremony at the Windsor Cenotaph due to an unexpected and unfortunate family emergency. While riding his bike to school in the morning, my son was hit by a car. My son had the right of way. He did not have a stop sign, and although the driver did as he should and came to a complete stop, he did not see my son when advancing through the intersection and hit him. My son was thrown from his bike, rolled up the hood of the car, and when the driver slammed on his brake, my son was thrown to the ground. I am happy to report that my son received the best of care from the paramedics and police officers that arrived on scene, as well as from one of our local hospitals. He was battered and bruised, but not seriously injured. The driver of the vehicle, although understandably shaken, is doing just fine as well. I mention this incident to once again bring awareness to the importance of all cyclists, regardless of age, to wear helmets and be aware of all your surroundings. Motorists also need to be ever vigilant when on our streets. In a split second, someone's life can be dramatically altered, and nobody wants to read in the news that another cyclist was badly injured or killed while cycling our streets. Thank you. A member from the Public North, member statements. Thank you, Speaker. I'd like uh, to share with the House some good news with regard to the redevelopment of Etobicoke General Hospital. But before I do that, Speaker, uh, speaking on the healing arts, I too would like to offer my uh, condolences uh, for what took place. Uh, I would like to express our condolences for our brothers and sisters in Paris, as well as the French nation. We are with you. Please to uh, alert my colleagues uh, and my constituents and residents about what is going to be perhaps a multi-million dollar, uh, I think we're not really supposed to specify the exact amounts, but I think it's going to be $200 million plus uh, Tobacco General uh, development. We're going to be uh, tripling to quadrupling the floor space. This will involve a larger uh, state-of-the-art emergency department, a critical care unit, an intensive care unit that are, by the way, uh, speaker, four times the size of the current space, a maternal newborn unit with birthing, birthing suites and a specialized nursery, a new ambulatory procedures unit, as well as a cardiorespiratory and neurodiagnostic services. And that means, speaker, more dialysis, more, uh, for example, cardiac stress tests, more nuclear scans, uh, more radiology of all different kinds, uh, hopefully to improve uh, the health the diagnostic capability and the health outcomes for my residents in Etobicoke North, and I, of course, be pleased to. I'm pleased to be joined uh, with moral support from the member from Etobicoke Lakeshore, no, Etobicoke Centre, uh, who is strategically located behind me, Speaker, uh, who also was present. Uh, I won't share with you because I would, of course, be using props, but I do have photographic evidence of the announcement. So thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Thornhill. Here, here. 
Speaker, yesterday I spent a bit of time with the ladies at a Jewish woman's retreat. It was actually in Markham. A lot of the people were from Thornhill, from Toronto, and across the USA and Canada. It was a very exciting weekend and very inspirational. The 54th um, convention of its kind, and it's basically a gathering of women from the Chabad community, and Chabad is pronounced Ch, so I want you all to practice and get ready for Chanukah, because that's just around the corner. And uh, some of the speakers, one of them was actually here this morning, um, and she is the wife of the late Knesset minister, Avner Shaki, and she was here today, Nechama Shaki, for question period. She didn't make it quite through, but she sat there for most of it, and I'm sure she has a few words to say about all of us. Uh, Fagi Kaplan is the wife of the famous Rabbi Kaplan from Chabad at Flamingo and Thornhill. She was a speaker. Georgiana Stockhammer, whose daughter went to school with my daughter, also from Thornhill, a lawyer. Betty Barmherzig spoke, and uh, she uh, does exercises for religious Jewish women. She was a patient of mine when I worked as an optometrist. Rabbi Yossi Jacobson, uh, Miriam Swerdlo, and Rabbi Avraham Plotkin from Chabad at Green Lane in Markham, Mrs. Sarah Hanna Radcliffe, Mrs. Michelle Sankar, Dikla Zivkatz, who was in the Israeli army, Marcy Katz, who believes we have the power to change our moods, and Shulamit Finkelstein, who helps people cope with stress. So thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for your time. Thank you. Member Sinkins, member from Niagara Falls. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today, I'd like to talk about an incredible moving experience I had in my riding. Anyone from Niagara knows about Heartland Forest and the incredible work they do for children in our region. Last week, I was happy to stop by Heartland Forest and witness their incredible workshop in action. It was an area on property where children and adults of all ages and abilities are being taught carpentry. They have programs for young people with autism. They have programs for adults with brain injuries who need occupational therapy. And just last week, they launched a brand new full day program, again, for young people with autism. What better is it that they are being taught these skills by retired teachers who have volunteered their time to help those who need it the most? It highlights how important these teachers are in our community and the difference they make in the lives of our young people, both inside and outside the classroom. Mr. Speaker, the work, the work that comes out of the workshop gives these incredible, inspiring children and adults a chance to create something they're proud of. I'm also happy to say that the program is funded by the Ontario Trillium Benefit, just one great example of the positive role we as government can play in our communities by reaching out to those with disabilities. I want to send a sincere thank you to Heartland Forest and their founder, Dan Bowman, for the work they do in Niagara in our community. What they offer is priceless, and I'm ex extremely proud to support these efforts as a member of this legislature. Thank you very much. Thank you. The member, Davis, the member from Mississauga Streetsville. Well, thank you, Speaker. Last week, the Indian community celebrated Diwali, the festival of light. Hindus, Sikhs and Jains, and also many Buddhists around the world lit candles and set off fireworks, signifying the triumph of light over darkness and good over evil. Diwali, like Christmas, is a religious festival. It commemorates the homecoming of Ram after 14 years of exile in the forests and his victory over Ravan. Celebrants mark Diwali with prayers, the lighting of divas, fireworks, and the sharing of sweets and gifts. In the Sikh community, this day is celebrated as Bandichur Diwas. The sixth guru, Guru Hargobind Sahib Ji, was freed on this day in 1619 from imprisonment in the famous fort of Gwalior by Emperor Jahangir. Guru Sahib negotiated his release and that of 52 kings and princes to coincide with Diwali. In the past two weeks in Western Mississauga, my office hosted our first community Diwali reception. I attended the Hindu Heritage Center's Diwali Milan and the Ram Mandir's Diwali fundraiser in Gala. The Gujarati community celebrates the day of Diwali as New Year, and I joined my many Gujarati friends at BAPS Swami Naranyan Mandir. And I attended the Diwali party hosted by my many friends at the Mississauga Senior Club. Shub Diwali, or Happy Diwali to all. Thank you. Member Statements, the member from Sikko Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to talk about the need for protections for people living in what is known as land lease communities. These communities are covered by the Residential Tenancies Act. 
However, they are exempt from the protection of rent controls under that Act. In my riding of Simcoe Gray, many residents in Wasaga Beach are worried the affordable lifestyle homes they purchased in land lease communities won't be affordable over the long term. In the Park Bridge lifestyles communities where they live, they report annual increases, uh, rental increases in the last few years of 3.3% to 4%. As well, they report monthly rental fee increasing increases of $50 every time a property is sold to a new owner. And they say they've seen maintenance fees increase as much as 15% or more in a year. Mr. Speaker, these increases aren't sustainable. Residents are worried they will no longer be able to afford their homes. They also worry the increases will make the properties less attractive to potential buyers. On top of it all, the residents say the rationale for the increases is not transparent. They don't get a good explanation uh, from the owners of the property. My constituents purchased their homes thinking they would be a great place to live. They thought they would enjoy a certain quality of life, a high quality of life, and a lifestyle that they've worked hard for many years to achieve. Mr. Speaker, the government needs to ensure that people living in land lease communities are treated in a transparent and responsible manner. Thank you. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Ottawa South. Very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, this past weekend in Ottawa, a friend to many, Linda Smith, passed away. She touched our lives as a volunteer for politicians of all stripes. Linda had a developmental exceptionality. That exceptionality filled her with unconditional love and acceptance in abundance. She would call our office daily, sometimes several times, just to check in. And I know this happened in offices across our city. More than one person has said, you could be having a terrible day, and Linda would call and you'd forget your troubles. Linda could lift up all those around her. At regular council meetings, she often sat in the front row waiting for the mayor to acknowledge her. And she also loved to have her picture taken with just about anyone. Linda would help out with any task in the office, especially if it came with lunch. Two slices of pizza, one to take home, and a Pepsi. She loved strawberry milkshakes and ice cream. She was great company. Her exceptionality also left her vulnerable, and she struggled with how people could be cruel, mean, and thoughtless. Thankfully, she was resilient and quick to forgive. Linda, you were our friend, and we're the better for it. You truly brought out the best in all of us. We will all miss you. God bless. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Halton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it is with a heavy heart that I rise today to speak about the recent tragic events in Paris, France. The attacks on Paris are devastating, and our thoughts are with the innocent victims and their families. Les scènes de mort, de destruction et the destruction and the terror were horrible. This was a tragedy, and this shows us that life is so precious. The terror were horrific and unforgettable. It is a tragic reminder that life is so precious. In the wake of these violent events, it is important to remember these acts of terror were carried out by a small group of people who promote violence and hatred. That is why I find the attacks on a local mosque in Peterborough unsettling. This is a time to demonstrate compassion and solidarity for everyone in our communities. This is a time to be proud of our diversity and the strength of our shared values. This is a time to be proud of our religious harmony in Ontario and Canada. Mr. Speaker, as you know, across Ontario and Canada, vigils were held this weekend to show support for the French people and their government. Among them was an emotional gathering at Celebration Square in Mississauga and a somber vigil in the heart of Toronto in Dundas Square. These acts of terror are an attack not only on the innocent victims in Paris, but on the values we all share worldwide. They are an attack on democracy, freedom, and multiculturalism. The loss of life experienced around the world last week in Paris and many other countries was a blow to humanity. Finally, Mr. Speaker, it is a time to remember those who face such terrible losses in France and stand in solidarity with the French people and the pillars that that community was built on. Liberté, égalité, fraternité. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank all members for their statements.